So when investing in your video podcast setup, you don't have to break the bank when it comes to the video aspect of things. I, I encourage investing a little bit more into the audio than the video. So actually in this video, I have clients coming in to shoot this interview setup with four different mics. And to capture video, we're using Canon G7X Mark III's, a point and shoot camera that's super easy to use. So let's break it down. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Zakori with Think Media, helping you with the best tips and tools to help build your influence with online video and on this channel we do tech gear reviews camera setups just like this one so if you're new here consider subscribing so usually I shoot this podcast with just one camera it's I use my Sony a7 III with the 24 to 70 G master lens it's close to a $5,000 setup and so they wanted to do a special episode interviewing uh, friends of theirs and so with that being said I wanted them to actually look at each other and film a conversation many podcasts could be shot this way but we're gonna go through the AVL or the audio the visual and the lighting of this setup that we're about to shoot, so let's get it. So starting with audio, we are using the Shure SM7B microphones. Uh, you know, the owners invested in two additional mics so we can have a total of four because they do expect to shoot a little bit more interviews this coming year, and so they just wanna be prepared for it. And so when buying this mic, you definitely wanna buy a mic stand. We are using the Samson desktop mic stand. I love this mic stand because it's not too high. So you could sit at a regular chair and the mic is exactly where you kind of need it to be, um, you know, this distance. A lot of people do this when you're trying to get the distance between the mic. Um, but when you buy this mic, you definitely want to invest in cloud lifters or there's different types of mic activators on the market. However, this one has just been proven and it's the one that a lot of people recommend. And again, I, I really do stress that when you're investing in the audio aspect of your podcast to kind of like get the best you can at your budget because you don't have to upgrade audio as often as you would potentially video. So you can buy everything you need at once and never really have to think about a cost that you're gonna have to cure later on. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna get an XLR cable to go in that's from the mic and then from this you're gonna go out into a recorder. Then what we're using to capture the audio is a Zoom H6 handy recorder. Uh, this has been awesome, but again, this was something they bought uh, up front. This was like when they first started their podcast, knowing that we would potentially be adding more mics to this setup. And so again, a move they made that has paid off already because upgrading to two additional mics, we simply just had to buy more XLRs and they can go straight into this. So now they can do up to four people instead of actually having to buy another recorder because they make these with just two inputs. However, the few things that I really love about this is number one, the analog uh, use of this dial. It's just super easy to dial in audio. Uh, another reason why I love this is the phantom power it gives off. And uh, speaking of power, it's being able to plug in USB to get continuous power because Whenever you have phantom power turned on on this, it can eat AA batteries like crazy, but simply plugging this into an outlet and you never have to worry about battery is an awesome feature that this specific recorder has. And then the next thing is just a compressor limiter. What that means is it auto adjusts kind of levels as in real time as people are talking. And so, you know, the nature of a conversation could, could be low and then it could get to a high moment when everybody's laughing, which scares a person like me because then there's all, all this peaking takes place. But the Zoom will do its best job to kind of keep those levels down when it starts getting higher. And so it's a very useful recorder that you would want to look into. And so make sure you check out the Zoom H6 handy recorder. All right, now let's talk video. So in this specific setup, I wanted to use a very lightweight setup just because I don't have three Sony a7Threes laying around, but we do at Think Media have a few G7Xs laying around by few, I mean three. Uh, so I wanted to break down why this camera is not a bad idea uh, to use for your video podcast. So the first reason is because you're not using the camera's audio to post your video podcast. You are using the audio that's being recorded onto your Zoom and then later in post, you're going to sync that. I actually have a video, how I edit my video podcast. If you wanna check that out, make sure to check out the YouTube link in the description and uh, that video will help you so much. I know it will because I take pride in that. But anyway, uh, what's so cool about the G7X Mark III is it does shoot in 4K. However, I wouldn't shoot in 4K for your podcast. Why? Because there's a five minute record limit using the G7X Mark III. However, the picture quality out of the Mark III is very, very nice. And so the just the idea of being able to pack my three angle, you know, podcast setup in a bag, 
uh, like this and then showing up is super sweet. A cool thing about the G7X Mark III is definitely its ability to have continuous power. And so you can pick up a USB-C uh, adapter to power on your G7X Mark III without even using the battery inside. And so that's super helpful if you know you're gonna go three angles and you, know, you don't wanna keep burning through batteries through your shoots uh, to not have to think about something like that. I find many times if I just forgot to put my battery on a charger overnight that you know I'm starting the day with not 100% battery. And so things like this can definitely help that issue. And Sean actually did a video on the best accessories for the G7X. Uh, make sure you check out that video. We'll put a link to it in the card and in the description below. However, I found out something unfortunate about the G7X Mark II and that was one of the angles that I was using and it was that it doesn't shoot past a four gigabyte record limit. So what does that mean? Essentially that means that you can't really record past around the 13 to 16 minute mark with this camera, which is very unfortunate and sad to find out after I hit record on this podcast that it did that. Um, however, you know, if you're, if you're shooting three angles, if you wanted to invest in the G7X Mark II for a podcast setup, or you can go with like an older Sony RX100 model. The point is that point and shoot cameras could totally work for video podcasts. However, uh, it only getting me about 16 minutes isn't a deal breaker. Why? Because if you are using a three camera setup and let's say you do hit record on, you know, all three cameras to start your podcast, uh, as the podcast goes on and this is starting to run out of time, you could stop recording, hit record, then you can go over here, stop recording, hit record while this is recording, and then you can go over here and stop recording, hit recording while these are recording, and then in post, you just don't cut back to that angle that when you shut off the recording. All in all though, I did find that this was a cool setup. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I like doing a little bit more nimble, simple setups because the more obtainable this whole idea becomes about shooting your video podcasts, the more people that will step out and kind of do it. I would even encourage you to use your phone. What's so cool about the phone is most phones, especially the iPhone, can shoot in 4K. Um, and if you're using a phone that shoots even in 1080, that's perfectly fine. And guess what? Most phones also don't have record limits. And so if you have the space in your phone to, to record as long as you need, then that's super awesome. And I will, I will one of these days shoot a three angle podcast with iPhone just to debunk everybody who's you know having their uh, video as their excuse to not post their video podcast. I actually do have a client that shoots her podcast with her iPhone in 4K, but she invested in a good mic. So honestly, you know, 50% of video is audio, but I would even say whenever it's a long form video, you really want your audio dialed in. And so really look into investing in good audio more than it is good video because you can use your phone. Continuing the conversation when it comes to video is our tripods, right? So I wanted to break down the two different tripods I actually own and uh, can, can kind of vouch for. And so the first one is the KNF Concept tripod. I love this tripod. It's like made out of aluminum. It's uh, an awesome price point. You can do so much with it, you know, bring it taller. It has a ball head, which is great. Uh, I actually put my Sony on this one. So this is my go-to workhorse tripod. I like it because it does pack up small. I like it because you can do a lot of things. You can even shoot vertical, you know, tripod flow. It's just an awesome tripod. Uh, however, I don't own 10 of these. I don't know, I just own one. <laughs> so I wanted to break down this other one I bought one time uh, because I was like in a rush to have a second tripod. And this is just a Manfrotto compact action tripod. It's about 50 bucks. I actually like this. It's kind of funny, it has this like little pistol grip to use as your video head, which is uh, which is actually helpful. Uh, but again, I love this because of how small it packs up and uh, it packs up smaller than the KNF and so just fitting it in your kit. So if you, if you really just wanna like, you know, pack up and then, you know, set up your shop for shooting video podcasts if it's not in the same place. Thinking about a very nimble pot, uh, tripod is very important. It also uses a cool quick release system. It's just a, a circular thing that you can just screw on uh, to your camera and then, you know, just lock it in place. Super cool for a very light camera. Now, I wouldn't put my Sony on this, just so it's not that trustworthy. It's kind of light on top. I actually trust this to put bigger camera setups on, but those are just the, the few tripods that I'm using in this specific shoot. So we covered audio and we covered video, and uh, before I cover lighting, real quick, I wanted to ask the question to you is, are you thinking about starting a podcast? If so, what would your podcast be on? Let us know in the comment section below. And hey, if you're getting value in this video, why don't you smash the like button, but let's get into lighting. I'm using the same light throughout. I have three 
prismatic RGB rainbow ring lights that we got from the DVE store. We love these lights. If you ever see color in the back of our videos, uh, which we've been putting up lately, it's usually being splashed with these lights. I use it for photography. We shot some headshots of Sean the other day and they, they came out super sick. And the reason why these lights are awesome is number one, it has a full range of colors. Not only could you use it for traditional cold and warm lighting, um, but it also hops over into like hue mode where you can get any color on the rainbow uh, in these lights. There's tons of colors that you can match up. And it's so cool because there is an LED screen in the back which shows you the, either the color you're on or your Kelvin temperature, which makes it really easy to streamline your settings all around so you have consistent lighting. Uh, and I, we just love using this lighting for, like right now I'm being lit by one, and then we have the two back there, but I used two in this specific shoot uh, at a regular daytime light setting, and then I hit up one on a, on a red color to just bring a little splash of vibe. Um, we found when you just throw in some color in the background, it really can like give life to your image, especially if it's a stationary shot. Another cool thing about this light is it could be battery powered. And so we love, I mean, I love using continuous power when I can, but to have the ability to just charge up a few uh, NPF550 batteries, you know, the preferably the thicker ones, but you can legit light up an entire setup for a long time if you just invest in some batteries. But I love the aspect it has that option. So um, those are a few things we love about those uh, lights. If you wanna check out these lights, check out the link in the description below. It's at the DVE store and Guy, the owner and the inventor of these lights, he actually gave us a discount code. If you use the code OMARROCKS, you will get 50% off these lights. And so uh, make sure you check out those lights. But hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you wanna check out our video podcast series, uh, you could check it out in the YouTube card or just tap the screen right now.